Hello everyone, I am Dr. Madhushankar, Hypertension and Kidney Specialist, Sri Ramakrishna Hospital, Coimator. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Ask Dr. Madhu. In this video, we are going to discuss about renal stone disease, formation of stones in the kidney and the ureter. So this disease is more common than we actually think. Let us see who are all vulnerable, what are the risk factors, how to identify this, why the stone is formed, what are the investigations to be done, whom to consult and what are the treatment factors for this disease. Renal stone disease is more common in men than in women. It usually peaks in the 30th and 40th year of age and as one ages the chances are more. Those who work in hot and humid climates, those who stay in such a place, those who sweat a lot, those who do not take enough fluids to replace their sweat suffer from this disease more than others. Some 10 to 15 years this disease was seen in 3 out of 100 people and now it has gone up to 8 in every 100 population. So scientists were wondering how this could happen, why there is this increase in spike all of a sudden. But they also found some interesting factors. Along with the increase in renal calculus disease, there is an increase in incidence of diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity that is uh, fattiness and increase in cholesterol in the blood. So they came to a conclusion that all of these diseases including the stone disease is a result of a poor lifestyle or dietary habit. They call this as a lifestyle disease or a non-communicable disease. So correcting a basic abnormality can rectify almost all of these problems. For example, in 2008 in China, they added a substance called melamine to the milk and milk powder that the kids consume. This melamine was added to increase the protein concentration in the milk. Unfortunately, it resulted in large scale kidney stone disease and kidney failure in children. A substance which is added to increase the protein concentration or something that we add to increase uh, or to make the appearance of food stuff better of something of that sort can result in very bad outcome and a large scale problem. So we have to be very careful in choosing the foodstuffs and practice mindful eating. How to identify the disease? Most of the times this disease uh, does not present with symptoms. When we do an abdominal scan for some other cause, we get to know there is a stone in the kidney. This is called as an asymptomatic or an incidental finding. When it produces symptoms, the most common is pain. The pain can be very low grade dull pain at the sides or at the back. When the stone passes from the kidney into the ureter, the pain becomes very excruciating and intolerable pain. Only those who have suffered it will be able to explain that to you. And as it passes along, the pain increases. From the back, it moves to the sides into the front of the lower abdomen. Along with it, there will be increased frequency of urination. Uh, the urine past may be, you know, burning in nature. Blood can come in the urine. When the stone that is passing downstream gets obstructed, the upstream may get dilated. There can be an infection or there can be an acute kidney failure. A stone which is unattended for a long duration can repeatedly damage the kidney leading to an irreversible renal failure. Why the stone happens at the first place? Take for instance, when we mix water and cement, both has to be in right proportions so that the mixture is right. When the cement concentration becomes more, it becomes solid. This is kind of a similar situation, but it is more complex. Because in urine, there are substances which favor the stone formation like calcium, oxalate, uric acid and there are substances which inhibit the stone formation like citrate. So most of the time it is the balance between both the factors in addition to the concentration of urine and the acidity of the urine which determines whether the stone will be formed, whether it will increase in size or it will produce symptoms. What next to do? When you have a stone, you have to undergo certain basic blood and urine investigations. Besides certain subsets like those who have repeated stone formation, those who have stone on both sides, children around 10 or 15 years of age, those who have a strong family history whose family members one or more have stone diseases, non-calcium stones. 
they should undergo a 24 hour urine collection to determine the concentration of this substance that I just mentioned and that should be done on two different occasions. When you consult your nephrologist for the above test, make sure you disclose your family history, your dietary habits, the amount of uh, fluids that you take and the drugs because any of these things can be the predisposing factor for stone formation. When you pass stone in the urine, make sure you collect it, dry and store it so that that can be analyzed to identify the composition of the stone. Majority of the stone is formed of calcium, can be of a calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate. It can be an uric acid stone, a cysteine stone. A struvite stone deserves a special mention because one, it is associated with infection. Two, it is also called as stag horn, like a horn of a stag. It almost occupies the entire kidney and in due course of time, it leads to an irreversible renal failure. So what treatment and management options do we have? First, uh, which has to be followed by everybody with a renal stone disease is diet and fluid management. Very, very important. The importance of this is something which uh, you have to be uh, reminded every time. You should follow it on a daily basis. Fluids. You should take fluids so that you pass at least two and a half liters of urine in a day, which means your fluid intake should be around three, three and a half liters every day. Someone may have the habit of taking large quantity of fluid as soon as they wake up and then do not take fluids for some time and then drink in bouts and keep repeating it. That is not the way it should be taken. You should take a fixed quantity at, throughout the day at fixed intervals. More important is taking uh, fluids before you go to bed. When you sleep for 7 or 8 hours, that is the time duration when you do not have access to water or any other fluids and hence you get dehydrated, urine gets concentrated. So make sure you make it a habit to drink at least half a liter of uh, water before you go to bed. When you wake up to pass urine, you drink some more fluids and then go to sleep again. If you find it too difficult to drink water, you can substitute it with some lime juice. Coming to diet, first and foremost is salt. I have repeated this multiple times in many videos before. 5 grams salt in a day of which 2.5 grams is sodium which is 1 teaspoon mandatory there is no compromise on this. Next is protein. You should take around 0.8 to 1 grams of protein per kilogram in a day. The source is preferably plant based like from grams and chickpeas and grains because animal based protein can increase the acidity of the urine hence favoring stone deposition. Okay. When it comes to calcium, the common concept is most of the stones are calcium based. So what if I reduce the calcium in the diet? No, that is not how it works. You should take calcium which is recommended to you by your dietitian or a doctor based on your age, gender and bone status. And that calcium is preferably from food like dairy products. You try to avoid a supplemental calcium or vitamin D as much as possible because some studies shows that as a taking supplemental calcium or vitamin D increases stone forming risk. Right? So finally based upon uh, your stone analysis or your 24 hour urine test you may be given some tablet uh, to adjust the composition in the urine accordingly. And comes the role of surgery. What kind of surgery and when to do a surgery. So usually stone of around 5 millimeter or less passes on its own. In majority of the cases this uh, leads to some symptoms but does not require surgery. But when the stone is uh, more than 5 mm it results in some surgical requirement which can be elective or emergency. When the stone passes down the stream if it gets obstructed and there is a dilatation upstream when it is complicated by infection or an acute renal failure, the surgery has to be an emergency surgery. When uh, you have a heavy stone burden or in the presence of a staghorn calculi, you can electively choose to undergo a surgery and remove the stones. You consult a neurologist, he will be the better person to tell you what and uh, when to undergo the surgery. In short, this renal stone disease is a metabolic problem. You have to identify the factor 
are a risk factors which favors the stone formation make sure you modify your uh, lifestyles and dietary habits and fluid intake so that you prevent the recurrence of the stone you should take your nephrologist help for that and whenever there is a surgery you have to undergo that and your urologist will help you with that a team of a nephrologist urologist and dietitian can uh, help you to prevent stone recurrence because repeated asymptomatic or a symptomatic stone can lead to irreversible kidney failure in the long run so all that it needs is a simple modification of a diet or lifestyle to have a pain free stress free and stone free life thank you